In the Earth's exosphere, the American government realizes that a satellite has been damaged and sends a superhero known as Miracle Guy to investigate. As soon as he exits the atmosphere, the hero finds thousands of pieces of debris and a colossal alien ship firing in his direction. Confident as ever, Miracle is not worried at all and decides to pose for a selfie, when he realizes that the wreckage is actually thousands of mini alien ships in camouflage, Techno hears the sound of a large explosion and tries to contact Miracle, only to realize that his companion is falling unconscious. Techno manages to catch him in midair and does everything he can to slow his fall, but since he is low on fuel, they both begin to fall out of control and they must call for help from the heroes, the heroics group. Not knowing what is happening, Missy wakes up in the morning and sees the news on TV about what has happened in space, forcing her father Marco, the leader of the heroics, to promise not to go into action. It turns out that after the girl's mother left, the man made a deal with his daughter promising not to get into any new confrontations, always acting from inside the HQ. After reinforcing his oath, Marco takes his daughter to school and goes to the heroics headquarters where the director of the place, Mrs. Granada, is deciding which heroes to send to fight the aliens. At first, she thinks of sending Shark Boy and Lava Girl to deal with the problem, however, when Marco shows that the amount of spaceships is much larger than they were imagining, Granada decides to summon all the heroes of the Earth, including her former leader. At first Marco tries to refuse so as not to break the promise he made to his daughter, but he knows that this is an emergency and he gives in, taking his dual katana that was retired. At school, some girls ask Missy to help them catch a ball stuck in a tree, and she reveals that she has no power to do so, even though she is the daughter of one of the greatest heroes on Earth. As soon as her colleagues walk away, Missy is visited by two heroics agents who force her into their car so they can take her to HQ. When they arrive at the place, the girl is greeted by Mrs. Granada, who explains that every time a superhero goes into action, her children are taken to the underground fort, and that is exactly where Missy goes. In the room, the principal of the heroics thanks the other youngsters for their good behavior and leaves, but as soon as the woman leaves, they confirm that she is gone and start making a big mess, breaking all the rules of the fort. As soon as he notices the new student, Wheels, Miracle's son, goes to her and starts introducing all his classmates, telling her a little about their powers. In particular Ojo, who has drawing-related powers, Capella, who has vocal powers, and Wildcard, who has all the powers in the world, but since he can't control them, they appear randomly. After showing off her abilities, the classmates ask about Missy's and the girl changes the subject rather embarrassed, asking them to turn on the TV so they can watch the fight between the heroes and the aliens, making everyone realize that she has no powers at all. While they watch, all the heroes advance toward the center where an insane amount of aliens are sent to fight. Early on, Miracle goes up against the spaceships, trying to get revenge for what happened earlier, and receives a blow so absurd that it throws him all the way into one of the buildings, incapacitating the leader of the group. Nearby, Shark Boy is flying a drone when he too is hit and thrown into a TV station helicopter, bringing down the aircraft and being captured shortly thereafter. At the top of another building, Miracle is caught by two of the ships and even tries to escape, but he has no more strength and ends up being captured along with Shark Boy. Seeing her husband captured, Lava Girl decides to go into action and uses her powers to try to shoot down the mothership, but ends up hitting one of the volcanic rocks on Techno, knocking him out of combat and being captured along with him. One by one, the other superheroes are also caught by the aliens, leaving only Marco to try to deal with the aliens. And despite being the leader of the squadron, he knows he will not be able to do anything against so many enemies and decides to say goodbye to Missy through his communicator bracelet, jumping on the aliens and being captured soon after. As all the heroes fall, the president goes on a live broadcast and says that they have received an encrypted message from the aliens, asking the humans to surrender peacefully or accept total annihilation, giving a three-hour deadline before the invasion begins. As soon as the broadcast ends, Ms. Granada appears on TV saying that they will start a lockdown process and asking the kids to stay in their seats, but Missy doesn't accept the advice and tells her classmates that they need to get out of there before the aliens arrive. Curious, Wildcard asks how she knows this and the girl shows him Ojo's drawings. It turns out that while Wheels was presenting the powers of each, all the sketches the girl made on her iPad actually happened, leading Missy to believe that Ojo's true power is to predict the future. Finally, Marco's daughter shows one last drawing in which the aliens are invading the fort through the ventilation duct, and so they need to get out of there before that happens. But since they are in a lockdown, it won't be easy. Their plan is to get the guards' attention and warn them about the aliens' attack, however since none of the guards seem to believe it, Missy leaves Guppy in charge of knocking out the men. As she is the daughter of Shark Boy and Lava Girl, the girl has great combat skills and an insane hunting mode, as well as being able to control water and other liquids as she sees fit. After Guppy knocks out most of the security guards, Noodles uses his elastic powers to knock out the last man and get the access cards, but the group gets distracted and gives one of the employees a chance to activate the emergency button. 
locking them in there and alerting everyone inside the HQ. With nowhere to run, the group of little heroes can only watch as the aliens enter the pipeline and capture Wildcard. To save her companion, Missy asks Rewind to use his powers to go back a few seconds in time, thus allowing Wheels to stop the security guard from setting off the alarm and allowing them to escape before the aliens arrive. Outside, Noodles stretches his own body to look like an adult and pass unnoticed, but obviously it doesn't work and they are easily discovered and trapped near the exit. With nowhere to run, Wildcard points to a hatch in the ceiling and Missy suggests that Capella use her low-frequency voice to make the HQ employees start floating, forming a sort of ladder so they can reach the ceiling. Upstairs, the boys use the access card they got to steal a cable car to get out of the building safely, but as soon as they get outside, they are met with several employees blocking the way. To escape, Capella uses her powers and makes the cable car levitate, but since they are heading toward a building and the girl cannot change direction, Noodles must jump out and grab onto a pole to make the vehicle turn safely. A few miles down the road, Capella begins to get short of breath and the group starts to think of a place to hide, until Missy has the idea of going to her grandmother Anita's house. Just as they are about to approach, Capella's voice stops completely and they begin to plummet, falling straight into the woman's garden. Upon seeing the group, Anita says that there are two hours left before the invasion begins and that they should prepare for combat, starting the training of the new generation of superheroes. While they are getting better, Granada learns about Missy's communicator bracelet and decides to track it, discovering the girl's exact location. Unaware that the heroes already know where they are, the children of the superheroes further intensify their training, improving their combat skills and also their teamwork. With one hour to go before the invasion begins, the helicopters sent by Granada finally arrive and the group has to flee Anita's house by rushing out through a secret tunnel, while the woman stays behind to distract the heroes. Inside the tunnel, Missy borrows Ojo's iPad and uses the flashlight to guide herself, while she devises a plan to get to the mothership. Observing Ojo's drawings, Missy realizes that one of the ships is nearby and starts looking for it, finding the object a few meters ahead. Hidden, the youngsters wait for the alien to get out of the vehicle and run inside, but before they can even escape, the alien notices that he is being robbed and runs back to his spaceship. To save a friend who was left behind, Noodles reaches out and pulls the boy into the ship at the last second, managing to take off into space before they turn into pieces. After a few minutes of traveling, they finally arrive at the mothership and decide to look for their parents, but before they go looking, Wheels suggests that there is a tracker on Missy's bracelet and that this is why they were found so easily, so the only thing they need to do is track Marco's bracelet. While searching for their parents, the little heroes begin to hear a strange sound coming from downstairs and are soon attacked by giant tentacles that tear up the floor trying to hit them. Panicked, they run through the ship until they find an unlocked door, arriving on a place overlooking a gigantic pyramid in the center of the ship. In this place, they see the President of the United States walking normally while talking about the invasion with some other people. After he leaves, Granada appears behind them and begins to congratulate them on their accomplishments, saying that the headquarters was attacked within minutes of their escape and that they would have been captured had they not managed to get out. While the others are excited by the compliments, Wheels notices that Granada's vital signs are strange and Ojo shows a drawing revealing that she is also an alien. At that moment, the President appears and says that they have already found out, causing the woman to reveal her true form and order everyone to be arrested. As a result, they are taken to a maximum security cell where they must come up with a plan to get out. After some time, the group comes to the conclusion that the best option would be to use Guppy's powers to escape, but since there is no water inside the cell, there is nothing she can do. With this in mind, Missy plans to make all her friends cry to get the liquid. To do this, she starts making them think that they will never see their parents again, leaving everyone extremely down. With her plan completed, Missy gathers their tear and hands it to Guppy to mold a key to open the cell, finally freeing them. With 18 minutes left until the invasion, the leader of the small heroes plans to head towards that pyramid to stop the attack as soon as possible, but Wildcard disagrees completely with the idea and says that the best option is to free their parents so that they can resolve the situation. Unable to agree with Missy, the boy decides to separate from the group and take with him the facemaker, which has the ability to change his face as he sees fit. After separating from the others, the two stop in the middle of the corridor and start fighting soon after, each going to one side of the ship. Through the cameras, Granada sees the two arguing and decides to capture Wildcard, because according to her, his powers are very unstable and he could end up destroying everything by accident. As the boy tries to get through the doors with his random powers, Granada and her men manage to find him and decide to take the boy to the interrogation room. On the other side of the ship, the rest of the group continues searching for the pyramid when they are surrounded by the aliens. Despite this, Missy remains calm and manages to lead the group masterfully, ordering Capella to damage the aliens' eardrums, while Rewind and the others enter the fray. Still, the aliens manage to capture one of the kids and Guppy is forced into the shark frequency, a totally insane mode where she feels like attacking everything she meets. 
In this overpowered form, the daughter of Shark Boy and Lava Girl manages to free rewind and knock out several aliens, turning the tables in favor of the little heroes. To help his friends, Wheels puts his wheelchair in full speed and asks Noodles to make a bar with his arm. This allows the boy to hang on while his wheelchair accelerates full speed towards the aliens. Still, the aliens manage to recover and surround the group again, using their tentacles to pull chains from the ceiling and trap the group of child heroes. To reverse the situation, Rewind tries to use his powers to go back in time, but because of the handcuffs, he can't make it work. To help his brother, Forward decides to try to combine the temporal power of the two and thus manages to go back a few seconds in time, allowing Noodles to remove the shackles from the ceiling and place them on the alien's legs. Finally free, the group of little heroes arrive again at that pyramid from where Wheels intends to reprogram the aircraft's central control, but before they can do anything, a force field mysteriously appears around the structure, making it impossible for the group to access it. Confused, Noodles says there is no one around and asks who did this, and is answered by Ojo, who also reveals she is an alien. In the interrogation room, Granada arrives with her men and starts asking Wildcard about the group's plans, but the boy refuses to answer. Suddenly, Wildcard's voice starts coming out over the loudspeaker, saying that he has finally arrived in the command room. Confused, Granada tells her men to ignore it and that it was some kind of cheap trick, not believing that she was completely fooled by the young men. At the moment they separated from the group, Wildcard and Facemaker changed their clothes and looked for a security camera to fake the fight. In the midst of the confusion, Granada didn't realize that the two had exactly the same face and went after the boy with the ability to alter his face, leaving the control room clear for Wildcard to break in. Confused, Ojo asks when they planned this and Missy reveals that it was when they were going through the tunnel at her grandmother's house. While using the iPad to light the way, Missy ends up seeing one of the drawings that showed Ojo with tentacles, revealing her true identity. As soon as she realized this, Marco's daughter decided to tell the wild card and together they hatched this plan. With a little over two minutes to go, the boy manages to deactivate the force field in the control room and they can finally cancel the attack, but Ojo will not allow this to happen. To stop them, the girl takes out her pen and starts drawing alien creatures that come out of the iPad screen. To save time, Missy and the others are responsible for taking on the demented monsters, while Wheels tries to deactivate the timer. In the control room, Granada and her men arrive to try to reactivate the force field and find Wildcard determined to stop them. Confident, the woman asks how he will do this and the boy reveals that he can now finally control his powers. Thanks to his new abilities, Wildcard can now fly and use Super Shock abilities as much as he wants, in addition to Superman's freezing breath, which makes battle extremely easy and allows him to immobilize both Granada and his men. At the pyramid, the little heroes separate and Missy asks Guppy to use the little water she has left to make some shurikens. After that, the girl asks Noodles to turn his body into a slingshot and throw the ninja stars at the ink monsters, pinning them against the wall. With Guppy completely dry, Wheels realizes that the pyramid is made of liquid metal and suggests she try using it, allowing the daughter of Shark Boy and Lava Girl to make a Mega Chrome Shark, which devours the two ink creatures with one bite. Refusing to lose, Ojo sends even more drawings to deal with her former friends, forcing Missy to take desperate action. To defeat them all at once, the powerless girl asks Noodles to make a tightrope and goes straight to the middle to attract the enemies. As soon as the monsters also climb the rope, the girl asks Noodles to let go and falls toward the abyss along with the creatures, being saved by the low-budget version of Luffy who manages to reach out and grab the girl before she hits the ground. With everyone safe, Wheels hands the plate that will disable the timer to Noodles and asks him to place it in the ignition chamber at the top of the pyramid, however, Ojo tries to stop it and draws a tentacle to hit the boy's hand, causing the circuit to fall into the abyss. Desperate, Noodles tries to reach out one more time and retrieve the item, but since he can't reach it, another boy offers and jumps toward the object. With less than 40 seconds left before the attack begins, the boy finally reaches the ground and retrieves the circuit, but since they have no way to bring him back, Missy communicates with Wildcard and asks him to teleport to the pyramid. As soon as he realizes what is happening, the boy uses his powers to go downstairs and bring his classmate back, allowing Noodles to place the plaque in the chamber at the last second. At that moment, the entire mothership begins to shake and a hole opens up in the middle of the pyramid, revealing that the boy's parents were there all along. Confused, Missy asks Ojo what happened, and the alien girl reveals that it was just a test to see how well they work together as a team, and a training session for the future situations they will face on their journey as heroes. In closing, Ojo says she is satisfied with the result and suggests forming an alliance with Missy, asking for her help in saving other planets throughout the galaxy, as well as promising to help humans whenever they need it. With the pact made, the arena floor is put back in place and the little heroes can finally be reunited with their parents, to satisfy their longing after all this adventure.